one of the reasons that the Biden administration, you know, failed to really fight, you know, to keep this eviction moratorium in place, even though they knew since, you know, June 24th that it was going to be expiring July 31st. So they've had, you know, five weeks to try to come up with something, generate support to extend it through Congress or other means, but didn't do, didn't do fuck all, right? I mean, they kind of feigned very small and still very weak effort the last, you know, maybe day or two before, like telling Congress, yeah, go, go do this, go do this. We're pretending like we're doing something, but we don't really want it to extend. And I think one of the reasons that might be is the Biden administration um, and, you know, a lot of influential people within the Biden White House are connected to BlackRock, which um, has a lot of influence and they have been buying up a lot of houses lately. And what would a eviction, this eviction moratorium ending create for them? Possible opportunities to gobble up more single family homes, um, you know, all across the U.S. BlackRock's the world's largest investment manager, become an increasingly influential Wall Street player in Washington, D.C. It's a poster child of the revolving door between finance and politics. God help us. Um, firm has hired notable policymakers over the years and at least three leaders with the New York-based asset manager on their resumes now hold prominent roles in President Joe Biden's cabinet and a problematic right <laughs> former blackrock investment executive brian deese leads biden's, uh, biden's national economic council effectively serving as his top advisor on economic matters biden also tapped edwell edwell wally Adi, adeyemo former chief of staff to blackrock Chief Executive and longtime Democrat Larry Fink to serve as top official at the Treasury Department. Meanwhile, Michael Pyle, BlackRock's former global chief investment strategist who has worked in the Obama admin before joining the firm, serves as chief economic advisor to VP Harris. So we got high up Treasury Department. Also, uh, top economic advisor, basically. And then we have um, Kamala Harris's chief economic advisor, all tied to BlackRock. And, of course, they're going to be speaking into Kamala and Joe's ear, saying, no, no, it's, we, we can't, we can't, we can't keep extending this eviction moratorium. It's not bad. We got to think. We got to think wisely here. Don't. Don't do that. I mean, millions of people might lose their homes, but it'll create massive amounts of opportunity uh, and, you know, for our friends at BlackRock and the like. Of course, this is going to have, you know, an influence. Like, it's like how, um, you know, Jane Cougar and Anna Kasparian at TYT claim that, you know, taking that $25 million dollar corporate backed investment wasn't going to change anything of course it fucking does like <laughs> of course it fucking does just like having these blackrock ghouls you know within the white house blackrock controlled nine trillion dollars jesus it's huge The massive tech platform. What are they gonna? Blackstone or Blackrock? Is there a difference? <laughs> yeah, Dees previously worked for Obama.
What's that revolving revolving door, man? Hit the Federal Reserve. So in tight with all these <coughs> sectors of power. Climate change, yeah, I'm sure they're very, um, climate change. <laughs> CEO, or chief executive. Reportedly under consideration by 2016 presidential candidate Hillary Clinton to run the Treasury Department. Jesus. Dear. Was BlackRock by Holmes? I'm thinking of Blackstone. Yeah, I was right. Blackrock, other investment firms, killing the dream of home ownership, journalist says. What is this from? Tucker Carlson. Entire neighborhoods and converting single family homes into rentals. Jesus. While in cities like Houston, investors like Fink, that's this uh, chief executive, BlackRock, account for one quarter of home purchases. Yeah, I mean, uh, the housing prices where I am in the Pacific Northwest have, like, jumped astronomically in the last year or two. Fucking A. Oh, there you go, man. BlackRock, three former people who work there have prominent positions, basically ones Biden's talk top economic advisor, one's Harris's top economic advisor, then a higher up at the Treasury Department, all with extensive ties to BlackRock. You think maybe that has something to do with the Biden administration completely dropping the ball and trying to fight in whatever way they could have. There's obviously a lot of things they could have tried to do to extend this eviction moratorium. They didn't. And I think it would be silly to believe that having, you know, these investment banker, these hedge fund type, these capitalist class people, you know, with very close access and prominent positions in the Biden Harris administration, that's obviously going to have an effect on the things that they fight for, the things that they talk about, etc. And I think it applies to this. What say you? Let me know down below. Like the video if you like the damn video. Subscribe for more content. Peace. Much love. All power to the people. Become a Patreon if you're so inclined. Also put that link down there. But too.